Welcome, this is Microbiology Lab. I'm Kevin Tokoff, and this is going to be a summary of exercise two, in which we look at how to operate a microscope and learning some of the really important parts, and then we're going to go into the basics of bacterial shapes. All right, so here is a microscope very similar to the one that you're going to be using in class. Okay, there's a few structural differences, but overall the functionality is the same. This is going to be a compound light microscope. And there's a few properties I want to go over for this uh, type of microscope, and then we'll go into some of the relevant parts here. So first is the fact that this microscope is what we call parfocal. So what does parfocal mean? All right, so we have these, these lenses here. These are objective lenses, and we, they have different magnifications. And we can actually rotate through these and increase the magnification. So if a microscope is parfocal, that means that if you have your specimen that you're looking at in focus under one of these lenses, if you rotate to the next lens, it should still be in focus. Now, you may have to adjust the fine focus a little bit, but parfocal just means when you switch between these objective lenses, you should still be in focus on the specimen. And these microscopes are also paracentric. Paracentric is very similar, except it has to do with the object under question being centered. So when you have, let's say under this objective lens, let's say you center your visual field right on that object that you're looking at. Well, when I switch to the next objective lens, if this microscope is paracentric, then it should still be centered. That specimen should still be centered and it should be centered under all of these, okay? So these microscopes have these two properties, okay? Now, your lab manual goes into a lot of different parts of the microscope, okay? I've listed some very relevant parts here because these are important to the functionality of the microscope. And I just realized I misspelled this, whoops. So not only are they the functional parts, or really functional parts that you need, but being very relevant, these are the ones that are more likely to be asked on a quiz or an exam. And you should know all of them, but again, these are the most important parts. All right, so I don't have it listed here because you can't really identify it because it's within, it's inside the uh, microscope itself, but we have what's called an ocular lens. So the ocular lenses are basically near the eyepieces, okay? You can't see them. And the ocular lenses all magnify by a total of 10 times, okay? There's only one ocular lens and it's 10 times magnification. Um, that's one layer of magnification. But there's a second layer of magnification in these objective lenses. And there's four of them. You can only see three here, but there's another one behind this one that's right above the light source, okay? These objective lenses all have different magnifications, okay? And we're gonna go into more detail on those on the next slide. But this is like a turret right here, or a nose piece, and it revolves. And you can switch between these objective lenses. And you'll find that out and be able to operate that when you get into the lab. We also have here what's called a condenser. And the condenser is not the main part I want you to know, but the condenser condenses light. And you can kind of see it right here. There's a little switch sticking out right there. And you can rotate that around the condenser. And that little switch is called the diaphragm. And it turns out that what the diaphragm does is it affects the contrast of, of the image that you're seeing. So you can have high contrast, you can have low contrast, and depending on how you're seeing the object, you can rotate this as need be. There's no set rule for, how, for what position you have the diaphragm on. There's no set rule, but again, it really just depends on how you're seeing the object, and you're just going to rotate it until you can actually see it very well. Okay, the illuminator down here, again, that's really just the light source. That's really all there is to it. Um, the coarse focus and fine focus. The coarse focus and fine focus both move this mechanical stage up and down. So you'll have your slide right here on the mechanical stage, and the coarse and fine focus move it up and down. Now, the coarse focus is coarse because it moves it up and down to a very large extent, okay? And you will use the coarse focus initially to move your mechanical stage up closer to the objective lens. The fine focus is very small movements up and down. In fact, if you were to step away from the microscope and turn the fine focus, you may not even be able to detect that this is moving up or down. So it's very, very fine movements. And you'll use the fine focus once you basically have your object um, 
almost in focus, and then you can use the fine focus to fine tune the image. Okay, again, it's going to be much easier to understand once you actually use the microscope. Again, this little lever right here is the slide holder. You can pull it out, put the slide in there, and put it back, and it'll hold the slide in place. Then this platform is the mechanical stage, and I don't have it listed here, but this little set of knobs right here is called the mechanical stage operator, um, whatever you want to call it. But twisting these, instead of moving up and down, moves the mechanical stage left and right, and then forwards and backwards. Okay, um, because you'll, you might need to do this basically to center your object. Okay, so this is the mechanical stage operator. Then the last thing, which has a long name down here, rheostat light intensity control. We just call it the rheostat. This is really just controlling how much light there is. And it has settings from like 1 to 10 or something like that. But the point is, at low settings, it'll be low light. And at other high settings, it'll be high amounts of light. And again, this is very similar to the diaphragm in the sense that you just need to play around with it to get it to a point where you can see the specimen. Again, there's no set rule for what setting it has to be on. You just do it so that you can see the specimen. Okay? Now, let's talk about the ocular and objective lenses. So anytime you look through the microscope, you're going to see through the ocular lens, always. And it always has a magnification of 10 times. Okay? Again, it's very near the eyepiece. Now, these microscopes have twofold magnification. The first layer of magnification, like I said, is the ocular lens. But there's a second layer of magnification called the objective lenses. And each of these objective lenses has a color, and these are the same colors as the microscopes in the lab, and they also have a corresponding name and magnification. So the red one, and again these are detached, but it's the same thing, this red one is the scanning objective lens, and it has a magnification of four times. The yellow one is the low power objective lens, and it has a magnification of 10 times. The blue one is either called the high power or the high dry. Um, I think in the lab manual they actually use the term high dry, but either one is fine. It has a magnification of 40 times. And then I put three stars here because this is going to be an important one. The white one is the oil immersion lens, and it has a, ma a magnification of 100 times. The stipulation on the oil immersion lens is you only do this when you're doing oil immersion. And we're not going to talk much about oil immersion um, in this uh, presentation. We're going to do that in class. But suffice it to say that oil immersion has to use oil and it has some other considerations um, for preventing damage to the microscope that we'll talk about in, in lecture. Um, you're not going to use this lens for just looking normally at the bacteria. You're going to use only these three. Okay. Now, on a quiz or an exam, you will be asked to, first of all, know the names of each lens. So you need to know these names that are colored right here. And you also need to know these lenses' individual magnifications. Because what it'll ask you is to determine an objective lens's total magnification. So how do you calculate the total magnification of the objective lens? Well, remember, we have an ocular lens, which is 10 times, which is applied to all of these. And then each one of these has an individual magnification. So if we want to find the total magnification, which are these m's, we want to multiply the magnification of the ocular lens times the magnification of the objective lens. Well, since the ocular is always 10 times, the equation is pretty simple. To find the total magnification for any of the objective lenses, you just multiply 10 times the magnification of the objective lens. All right, let's look at an example so you know what you're doing. We want to determine the total magnification of the high-dry objective lens. What's the individual magnification of the high dry lens? It's 40 times. So to calculate its total magnification, I take the 40 times magnification and multiply it times 10, which is for the ocular. 10 times 40 is 400. So the total magnification of the high dry objective lens is 400 or 400 times. Um, some people will put a little bit x after here. You don't have to do that. You can just put the number 400. Okay. Another example magnification, or at least total magnification, of the oil immersion lens would be 100 times 10, or 1,000. Okay? Now, the last thing I want to cover in this presentation for exercise 2 are shapes of bacteria. Now, there's three very common shapes um, that you can run across, and I'm going to go over spirilli first because this one we're really not going to see that much, so I'm just going to get it out of the way. So spirilli, these are snake-like, so think S for spirilli, S for snake. 
Um, that's this one right here. They're almost like corkscrews and they're very, very long and thin, basically, but they kind of look like a snake. Okay, we're not going to encounter these much. The two that are very relevant here are the ones that are bolded, bacilli and cocci. So bacilli are bacteria that are rod-shaped, okay? They almost look like, if you've ever seen those, um, kind of like a multivitamin pill, um, they almost look like that. They can be a little bit longer than that, but they're just going to be a simple rod like this, okay? Cocci are circular. And I think cocci starts with the C. In fact, it has three C's in it. So C for cocci, C for circle. Now, in, re in all reality, these are three-dimensional, so they're spherical. But on a microscope slide where we can't see 3D, they'll look like circles. Okay? And these are the two main ones that you need to be familiar with because these are the main ones we're going to see and the main ones that will end up on an exam. Let's look at an example here, actually a couple of these. The bacteria in the two micrograph images to the left are of what shape? All right, so let's look at the first one. What are these? Well, these to me look like circles. There's a bunch of them. So these bacteria, number one, are cocci, okay? What about these in image number two? Well, these look more like pills, sort of, so to speak. So these are rods, so these in number two are bacilli, okay? Just for reference, cocci is the plural, so it's talking about multiple cells. So Singular, it would be coccus, and likewise for bacilli, that's also the plural, the singular is bacillus, okay? But you would be expected to uh, be able to determine what the shape of a particular bacterial cell is, okay? And that will actually wind up on the exam, I can promise you that, and it will also be on the quiz over exercise two, all right? So that concludes exercise two, an introduction on that. I will see you in class, and then the next exercise, number three, we're going to be talking about heat-fixing slides and the gram stain.